Participated in the FAI um, events this weekend, and it looked like they had a good time. They had their meeting in here uh, about an hour ago, and handed out medals, and generally had a, a great time. A lot of them are leaving now that they've they've done their thing, but a few are hanging around and going to enjoy the rest of the week. We've got a number of fun contests this week that are listed on the schedule. Um, we've already done a few, passed out a medal or two to certain nameless Bob Capwell people. <laughs> it's just his initials. Yeah. Uh, and there are some others that uh, are, have been flown, and we'll see when those medals get, get out to people and, and, uh, and all that kind of good stuff. But the actual hardcore competition starts tomorrow. We're going to have sea altitude tracking. And with nice tracking power, I hope you all remember to use. That's one of those things that makes it critical to find them. I think some of the high performance C models may get up to a kilometer, we'll see. Uh, we've got a baseline that's, actually we're gonna have three, three baselines, we're gonna have three point tracking. We have enough trackers for that. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough for actually four ships and still have timers. So it's going to be three ships, they're gonna be long shifts of two hours and 40 minutes uh, on the first three days. And I think the first two days are going to be the, the most ambitious where we've got both track altitude for egg lofting and tomorrow it's going to be um, sea altitude along with the duration of that where it is sea flex wing and then Tuesday is going to be the exciting world of G helicopter because we are out here and we had to have a G event and uh, that's how it's going to be although there's a nifty G Tasmanian devil sort of model out there the turbo vortico so and we've tested those out, and they're a lot of fun to fly, even if you're not using them in a the contest. They're not going to be a winner, but you'll give them back. Will they qualify? Yeah, yeah. yeah they'll yes. qualify. They were well. Return flight. Yeah, qualified return flight. You get 15 seconds out of them. That's exactly what we got. 15 seconds. <laughs> but they're fun to fly. You'll have a lot of fun with them after the air anyway. So. And if you've got a nice high performance one, well, our timers will do their best. One of those things where anybody cares to volunteer to be additional timers, in that, especially in the next two days, we can use everybody we can get. Uh, that's going to be the, the shortfall. Uh, in the tracking, and I've already talked to most of the trackers, I had some of the trackers before I realized we could go to three, three position tracking where we had two stations, and I wasn't happy with it, the trackers were either. And we have said it, thanks to Chris Kidwell and his mathematical genius and computer stuff and all that, there he is, yay. Uh, we will do three station tracking. We've got the points laid out, and uh, that should uh, improve the performance as far as getting a closed track, which is always the, the critical thing in any kind of a track event like this. And remember, tracking powder tomorrow, and a little more tracking powder. We've got some fluorescent orange stuff, or fluorescent pink, or whatever your favorite fluorescent color that works reasonably well. Uh, so that's the big thing about tomorrow. Tuesday, of course, is going to be egg lofting. Still, you want to use tracking powder, but those are not going to go quite so high, so it's not quite as challenging. And of course, with G helicopter, the real challenge is going to be for the timers. Um, 
they're going to go up a long ways. Make sure your helicopter is marked in a way that makes it visible, whether you've got some silver material on it to sparkle in the sun, and we will have sun, it looks like, or fluorescent colors on it. Yeah, I know it adds weight, but uh, it's no good if nobody can see it to time it. So those are the compromises you make in any model. Wednesday is going to be altimeter day with B, B Super Rock, and we're also going to have C payload altitude, and that's the one where you're going to have fun getting it back because you've got an expensive altimeter in this little model. You do have to get it back because the payload in it, uh, it's a DQ without a return for payload altitude, so remember that you do want to get it back. That's another model you want brightly colored so you can find it, find it once it lands. We put uh, spot landing on Thursday instead of Monday just because it seemed like a fun thing to do and also it meant if we had weather issues, uh, we could postpone some of the other more weather sensitive issue, uh, uh, events to that day. But as I look at the forecast, it looks like our Monday and Tuesday are really going to be our best weather for our more um, challenging events. I think that's the term you use. And a little more dicey weather on the, uh, at the end of Wednesday and on Thursday. So we'll see how that goes. Imagination celebration will take, take off after sport landing, uh, sport landing spot landing ends. Uh, and we'll see how that runs and how the weather holds up for that. Friday, of course, is craftsmanship day, and everybody will have the chance to fly that. Uh, Trip, who's going to be one of our RSOs, is not going to be able to be here on Friday, so we're going to look for somebody else to help us on uh, scale craftsmanship day for RSOing on that day. So, uh, anybody cares to volunteer, go ahead. On our list, we've had uh, one person who was going to be a queue manager. So the note had illness in the family, so we're going to want one more queue manager uh, for the blue shift. And by the way, if you don't have one of these shift things, we will pass them out at the, uh, I keep bringing that, well we have, we have them at registration and also at our, our big uh, shelter. No, not the, well the shelter is where those were. Oh, where we fly? Everybody's flying the target practice and winning a prize. What do you call that? <laughs> we have so many odd events here that just slip through my mind like water through a sieve. So uh, anyway, so we've got our, our list of people, and I think with any luck, you've picked up your sheet. And if you haven't, make sure you get one. I think we have them at registration. That's going to be the scale tour room, which is Salon ENF down the hallways. Many of you have already been there. That's for scale. Another craftsmanship tournament is going to be tonight. So that takes care of that. Um, another note, research and development talks. I got an email from Joyce Guzik today. And pretty much everybody's going to get to uh, give a presentation. On Tuesday night, at, starting at 8 o'clock, first one is going to be Clay Beaver. This is going to be combined A and B division. 8.15 is Ryan Estrada, 8.30 is Jay Richardson, 8.45 is Alyssa Stenberg, and 9 o'clock is Zach Stenberg. And in case you hadn't figured that out, that's alphabetical order. I have the sheets up here, I'll leave them up here so you can look. There's, there's Alyssa. She's ready for action. And when I see them combining, it probably means one of those innocent victims is an A division and the rest are B. So, alrighty, and Wednesday for C Division, that's going to start at 8 o'clock, and if I remember, I'll be there at 8 o'clock because I'm the first speaker. <laughs> 8.15 is John Buckley, 8.30 is Chris Flanagan, 8.45 is Vernon Richardson, 9 o'clock is Chad Ring, 9.15 is Alan Stoker, or is it Stoker? Stoker. Uh, and team division starts at 9.45, and that's going to be the Rocket Girls at 9.45. 10 o'clock is the Royal Rocketeers. 10.15 is Tracking and Altimeter Buddies. And 10.30 is Neutron Fusion. And I'll leave this list up here, and you can peruse it at your leisure. So that's pretty much all I have to say for the moment, other than fly safe. Um, one comment I've, I've been told to make is that there are, um, oh, what do we have? We have the mighty, 
all the, the nifty helicopters, what do they call those these days? Drones. Drones! You can tell my mind is totally fried today. I've been running around in circles. But drones are not covered by the NAR insurance. Um, so be aware of that if you're flying one. Frankly, so far, the drones I've seen flying have been minding their, their manners and staying out of the way of other people, and, and that's just fine. I have no problems with people flying drones unless you start interfering with rocket launches and things like that. And I think most of the people flying drones here know what's what and aren't going to cause any issues. So as far as I'm concerned, that's fine. Go ahead and fly your drones. Uh, just be aware that if you have liability insurance for it, it's not going to be through the NAR. All right, any questions? Radio control. Yeah, we got any kind of frequency control this year? <clears throat> Anybody still using 72 megahertz? I don't have, I haven't set up frequency control, no. Okay. I may be the only guy on 72. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say something about the scale turn in, if I could, for a second. Um, say your piece. Yeah, my piece. <laughs> this is scale, not sport scale, and also concept scale. Concept scale follows the sport scale rules. They're pretty much familiar. All you need is some sort of illustration showing the outline in colors. Uh, uh, but scale is measured scale, um, and we will have, me, Mark McReynolds, are going to be the data Nazis. We're going to be looking at your data before turning in your model. Make sure, at least before you leave the room, make sure you show us the data so we can go through and say, ah, they have these essential dimensions. Okay. You should have uh, overall length, main diameters, if there's multiple diameters, the uh, nose cone length, fin width, fin length, transition lengths. That stuff in a, in a table or a drawing that says what the original real rocket's dimensions were, and then those dimensions, either in the drawing penciled in or on a table, what the calculated dimensions of your model should be, the judges measure what the dimensions are. So you tell us what it's supposed to be. We go in and measure it and see how good it is. But scale, that's, that's a little extra twist. And we would like anybody who's doing scale, especially if you're new to this scale as opposed to sports scale event, we'd like to make sure you've got it right. And we'd like to make sure you've got the NAR number on the model. And if it's concept scale, you have appropriate data for the concept scale because the thing that annoys us scale judges is when we have to track somebody down because they left something off. So make sure your NAR number, actually your name is legit on the model, either your NAR number or name is on the model, you've got proper data, and we will check out your data and make sure that it's good so that we don't spend the rest of the week trying to find people. Okay. All right, others. Yeah. Going back to the um, radio control and the 17 megahertz frequency, um, we will need to let the RC club know if they are flying so it is not to interfere. 2.4 gigahertz does not with the other best. So are you using 2.4 gigahertz? No, I'm on 72. 72. <laughs> the RC club is probably not. There was an issue five years ago. I know there was an issue five years ago, but 2.4 wasn't as prevalent. But everybody was on 2.4, so it was determined it wasn't us. One of their planes crashed. So, okay. so anybody else? That. Yeah. I'll take care of it. Okay. Okay. When is the town meeting in the election? Okay, the town meeting will be Monday. Monday. At 7 p.m. Well, it's a, okay. yeah. If you haven't voted, can you vote tonight or do you have to vote tomorrow? Uh, at the meeting. At the meeting. You have to, meeting. You have to vote. You can't vote tonight? Yeah. You can't vote tonight? Not tonight, no. Timing question for tomorrow night, and actually for most of the week it looks like. Uh, people have range duty until 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. It's an hour's drive to get back to the hotel, and you've got the meetings at 7 o'clock. Do we skip dinner or do we not shower before we come? <laughs> um, Those on that duty sit in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Take care of that one. <laughs> yeah, that is a short timeline. I guess my question is, uh, are there any objections that we postpone that evening meeting on Monday a half an hour? Okay, we'll make sure to announce that that starts at 7.30 in the A lot of times we start with the voting, so maybe we should just delay the voting a little bit too because people will like the time to get to Yeah. Like a half hour in, start with the voting at 8 o'clock or something. Okay. I just want to give enough people a chance to come back yeah. and they can vote. Because so even, even we start at 7.30, is a little quick. So we'll start at 7.30 and have the voting at 8. have changed so rapidly over the days. Let me double check on Monday. Can they just post it in the lobby for us? I'll see what we can do, yeah. And then we can just it, focus it's been a problem this weekend. We've had FAI people running around and we've had some, some rapid room changes and it has left things more than a little bit confused. What room do we uh, turn into the uh, scale? That's going to be in Salon EF. Salon EF? Where yeah. you register. And the registration table is right in front of it, so it'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Remind them to turn in things for the auction if they have them. Yeah. Like yeah. Monday, <laughs> Monday we'll be here for the, uh, for the town meeting. This room? This room. Um, I'm supposed to see him yeah, one of the issues. Yeah, Chad. I just, uh, are the results going to be posted on the website? Like that, have been here at the end of the day. Is there a post with an opportunity to share a page or no results? They'll be posted somewhere. So, uh, yeah, Chris is our expert on that. Somewhere is going to be somewhere. Hey, any other questions? Okay, good luck everybody, have a good time. Hope everybody qualifies and everything. And uh, hope our weather hangs in as nice the rest of the week as it is today. And like I said, if you can volunteer your time tomorrow and the next day, that would really be nice. Rob, you have Larry Rice down as a timer. Larry will not be coming in until sometime on Thursday. Okay. I noticed that he was on the list for timing. He's on the first team, red team. Oh yeah. Because I have his scale model to turn in tonight because he won't be coming in until the end of the week. Okay. Which just sort of emphasizes we need more timers, especially first shift tomorrow if you can do it. I may even take a turn right now. I'm not sure you want to. Yeah, Pam. Quiet, please. Just let them know that I'm going to be on the contest range as assistant to you. They can come to me. Oh, yeah. I don't have an answer, I'll call you. Pam is she who must be obeyed is her official title. I think think of her as a ramrod. She will be out on the field tomorrow. Uh, she was our NARAM CD five years ago, and I've relied on her extremely heavily. Uh, basically, all the time I'm screwing up, she fixes things and then tells me I screwed up, but takes care of it. And uh, so she is very close to as good as me, uh, probably better than me, actually. <laughs> And my, my second phrase is probably better by as good as I'm officially contest director and she's not, but she's been one before and knows, knows the details. And she is a fairly direct line straight to me if something comes up. So, uh, and she will be out there. Channel 6 on FRS. Channel 6 on the FRS. Oh, keto. Not in sight, which I should be able to try. All right, anything else? Okay. Have a good time. 
fly safe and all that good stuff. And we'll see you at the fine field and back here tomorrow night.